Hello traders, this is Rich Derrick from TradeSite. This is a look at the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, July 10th, 2013. Past session we had a we had a pretty decent uh, market where the tape was higher across uh, the board. Uh, definitely the small caps were the standout today with the uh, small caps outperforming all the other major in indices. And uh, we had some fairly decent market internals to, to go along with that. But let's move on and take a look at the uh, the major uh, index futures. Let's first take a look at the ES minis. All right, so here's a look at the ES futures. We're up on the day, most of, again, most of which came from a gap, which is not ideal, and certainly indicative of a, of a retest or a bounce. The uh, futures closed up 10 handles on the day, but really most of that, as you can see from the chart here, came from the gap up on the day. A couple of key features here were in the in the in kind of the B wave retest. Here's your A wave to the downside. Here's your B wave bounce to the upside. Potentially retesting the high without without a breakout, but uh, that remains to be seen. Let's talk about what, what we do know. What we do know is that is that the seeker setup is now nine bars up. After nine bars up, we're looking for either some kind of a pause and a lateral movement or a return to the downtrend in the form of a retracement off that nine bars up. So tomorrow we'll definitely be thinking the short side out of the chute and we'll have to see if uh, that kind of materializes and uh, gives us uh, a roll back to the, to the downside. To the downside the obvious uh, first target is going to be the gap fill from the previous session that was left open yesterday 1635 or so. If we continue to the downside below that 1625 will come in play. To the upside, levels to watch. The 5 ace level, 15 at 1656 and a quarter. Then above that is going to be 1687.50, which is the high water mark of this move so far, and also the 6 ace level on the Murray Math box. As far as the NASDAQ futures go, we're also 9 bars up here. So same expectation. This is the, the B wave bounce. And note that the B wave has, has been really kind of shallow, and a lot of it. Uh, has been on some kind of sloppy looking candles. There's really only two decent looking two decent looking candles here. One where they recoup this loss and two here we have range expansion to the upside. Everything else is just kind of gappy and without the bulls really putting money to work after the market opened. So the 8 ace level at 29.68 and 3 quarters is uh, going to be the key level. We close just above that today. If we push higher uh, the, this level right here from a couple days ago is going to be important 29.92 to the downside the 50 DMA which is the red line is key support about 29.49 and a half 29.50 area first support next support is going to come in from the rising 10 EMA taking a look at the market internals the trend was lower on the day what they did was it kind of moved the uh, the 10 day trend or 10 day average a little bit closer towards that uh, overbought threshold of 0 0.85. So we're definitely moving in that direction. If we get that 0 0.85 uh, breach, we're definitely going to be looking for a uh, reversal to the downside. We have nine bars up in the secret camp, but we don't have uh, at this point that, uh, that uh, overbought uh, reading in the trend to support it. All right, here's a look at the, uh, the cumulative advanced decline lines. Uh, the NASDAQ side broke out, that's the lower chart here, broke out above the previous high, which is very, very positive. And what we, what we really need to see now is we need to see the New York side, which is the most important side, return to trend here, start to break out to the upside. First thing it has to do is it has to challenge uh, this trend line to the downside, from the downside here, and uh, break back above that. If it can do that, that's going to be a real sign of strength and return to the bullish sentiment that every, everybody that's long stocks is hoping for. But however, the NASDAQ side can also uh, offer offer some uh, some head fakes as well. Oftentimes it leads, but a lot of times it's it's just more volatile and is white noise. So what we really, what we really want to focus on is the, uh, is the New York side here. The New York side gets back up above this trend line. That's definitely going to be a, a short-term positive here for the bulls that will probably turn into an at least an intermediate positive development, but that remains to be seen. So we'll stand by and wait for the uh, improvement here on the New York. 
Okay, so here's a look at the uh, the banking index, the BKX, which is the blue line versus the S&P in red. The BKX has decisively broken out to a new high, as you can see. The uh, broad market still, still is still lagging for now, but this breakout is definitely welcome for the broad market. And if this continues to the upside, the BKX can be a very, very strong and formidable leader for the market. So if this continues higher, uh, continue to uh, to trade both sides of the tape rather than dig into the short side. Here's a look at the multi-sector daily chart. You can see that all sectors were higher today. The XAU is up a little bit, which is the gold line. The uh, banking index, the BKX, was definitely the uh, the better performer on the day. That is the uh, the green line. And the SOX and the BTK also performed fairly well. So let's drill down and take a look at some of the individual sector charts now. All right, so here's a look at the uh, here's a look at the sectors ranked from best to worst. So you can see that the Philly housing sector, the HGX, was the top gun on the day. It's 13 days down on the secret count, so we're looking for a pivot to the upside, and this could be uh, something for those to build on. Transports were also very very strong, greatly outperforming the uh, the broad market, and the cyclicals came on strong too, which is something that the bulls are always happy to see. Pharmaceuticals, telecom, and the BKX. Um, we're all just kind of kind of middling, if you will, and uh, the uh, middle of the road here was just just really kind of the uh, the consumers and, and the utilities, and the stuff that's lower beta. So pretty decent bounce day, and uh, potentially uh, interesting here if we can see the housing sector continue to the upside. All right, so first let's take a look at the banking index. The BKX was higher on the day. Fairly decent performance, uh, but here's the but. We're, we just finished 13 bars up in the countdown, and now we're nine bars up in the seeker, and we're bouncing up against a very formidable level, which is the uh, plus two ace level here on the Murray Math Box. So 65.63 is going to be a very, very strong level to the upside. And note that's also the risk level for the seeker sell signal, so it's a double level that a lot of people aren't aware of. So keep that in mind as we go forward here. Um, this is not something that I'd be adding on to right now. This is definitely something that I'd be evaluating for uh, for return to the mean and uh, shorts down to that 6250 area. Now here's the housing sector, which uh, is trying to pivot off of 13 bars down. Here's our n 1 through 9 to the downside. This is the HGX. And here's our 1 through 13 in the secret countdown. Big strong move to the upside today. Definitely something to, to, to be aware of got a double layer here we've got the 200 DMA which is very very important to uh, a lot of the longer term players and the plus one ace level on the Murray math box at 8125 so that's definitely something that you want to be aware of and if we can break back above that plus one ace level I would think that we can put this 50 DMA back into play let's take a look at the uh, the utilities next the utilities are kind of middling we've got this little potential head and shoulders bottom here's your uh, here's your left shoulder here's the head here's your right shoulder neckline is going to be four four ninety two nineteen if we can break above that we can see reversal back to the upside and then start talking about some uh, some of these uh, upper levels if we can get that done but uh, that remains to be seen and we'll stand by and wait for that the semiconductors need to be watched we had a very we had a very negative day the previous day today was just kind of a measuring day gapped up and kind of went nowhere this 13 exhaustion signal is still in play and weighing on the market if we break back down below the 50 dma and follow through to the downside which we did not do on the first time that will turn turn the chart definitely uh to the uh to the negative side as far as the overall bias goes now here's the gold futures the gold futures have pivoted back up to this 1250 area that we play with that today Didn't, couldn't really close above it but uh, pretty close. Uh, if we close above that and clear that, it's also going to put us above the 10 EMA, which will tr turn this chart back to short-term positive, which would definitely be a, a real development. So keep an eye on that. The MACD is also in in shape to to try and turn positive here and make may, maybe a run back at that uh, that zero line. And the oil futures are still struggling here. We broke out and ran up, but we were in the process of completing nine bars to the upside here. So now that nine bars have been completed to the upside, we're going to have a little trouble here, and we're just going to have to uh, 
start to uh, expect that we're going to have some back and forth here at best and not a continuation to the upside here in the many futures to the upside. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich from TradeSite.